<laughs> so the uh, street trees are irrigated by the street. Those trees are doing all kinds of great beneficial things. One is they act as living air conditioners. So now we're in an area that's not hit by the full sun, but we've got shade throughout, and that's going to increase over time. And this helps reduce the heat island effect. The temperatures in Phoenix, Arizona, summer nighttime temperatures have risen 10 degrees since the 1940s. And this is because you've got the streets and the sidewalks and the buildings exposed to the full brunt of the sun. They absorb that heat like a battery during the day and then they radiate out the heat at night. But we don't have to be part of the heat island effect. We can be part of the cool island effect. And so that's what we're going for here. We're planting living air conditioners. So if you can grow the shade to shade over enough of the hardscape you can actually cool the ambient temperatures in summer. What's more, um, this is a living orchard. So this is a mesquite tree and it uh, grows or, or produces these mesquite pods. And this has long been a staple food of the indigenous peoples of the area. Um, so it tastes good. Um, and we take this and we grind it up with a hammer mill we have. You can get more information on that at desertharvesters.org. And we grind it up into this fine flour, which we then use to make pancakes, bread, mole, you name it. The chiltipine, which is um, starting to go a bit dormant with the cold, it grew all these wild chilies. So it's a perennial chili plant. We also have the uh, flower buds of the choya cactus. Um, we harvest the buds just before they flower. Uh, we boil them for 20 minutes and then dry them out and brush the thorns off. And when we rehydrate these and cook them, they taste like artichoke hearts and they're very high in calcium. We also have honey. So we've got honey bees here and they are accessing a part of the mesquite tree we don't access. Um, they go into the flowers and get the pollen and all to generate this wonderful food. We're very careful to mulch the surface to increase the organic matter content so that we can bioremediate the bulk of the toxins that are coming off the street. Uh, in addition, we're doing this on a residential street, so there's far less toxins than you would have on a much more heavily trafficked street like a highway. Um, the other thing is we don't harvest any tuber crops or any food that comes in direct contact with the street runoff. When we harvest the mesquite pods, they're way up here in the canopy of the tree. Um, so they're not picking up any uh, potential contaminants from direct contact with that runoff water. So we live just north of downtown Tucson. And uh, when we moved here, very little vegetation, just had pigeons. Now we have very few pigeons, but we have over two dozen native bird species that were not here before. 95% of all this vegetation is indigenous to the Tucson Basin. So it's like the movie Field of Dreams when uh, they say build it and they will come. But we're not making a baseball field in the middle of a cornfield to bring back the dead baseball players. We're instead growing and regenerating the Sonoran Desert ecosystem in the urban core to bring back the, uh, the fauna of the Sonoran Desert ecosystem as well. And while we're at it, we can have some tidbits of delicious food, and feel a little bit cooler, breathe cleaner air, and say hello to our neighbors, because they love walking up and down this path, which they consider to be their neighborhood botanical garden.